Good afternoon. My name is Gillian Balaban and I'm Standard Assistant at GRI. Welcome to this meeting of the Global Sustainability Standards Board, known by its acronym, the GSSB, held on 21 January 2021. This virtual meeting is being held, being hosted from Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Please note that all public GSSB meetings are being recorded and you can find the audio recording on the GSSB web page along with the high-level summaries of previous GSSB meetings. Present from the GRI Secretariat today are Bastien Book, Chief of Standards, and Laura Espinach, Head of Technical De Development. We will now start with a roll call. Corley LaRue. Present, good afternoon. Evan Harvey. Present, hello. Julia Genuardi. Present, hello. Gustavo Sinner. Hi, present. Joseph Martin. Present. Kim Schumacher. Present. Peter Colley. Present, good evening. Good evening. Robin Leeson. Present, good evening. Good evening. And the GSSB Chair, Judy Kosiewski. Present. Hello. Thank you, Julian. Thank you, everyone. Um, GSA members Laura Dana Carter, Jennifer Prinsing, and Ramakrishnan Venkatesvaran sent their apologies. GSSB members Michelle Vasser, Kent Swift, and Vincent Kong will join shortly. I will now hand over to the chair, Judy Kuskeski, to open the meeting. Thank you very much, Gillian, and welcome to all of our members. Welcome to anyone who may be joining us uh, on the uh, broadcast. Um, today's meeting is a continuation in large part of the ongoing conversations that we've been having around the updates to the Universal Standards Project that will take up the bulk of our time today. But we have a few other things. Um, uh, Gillian, can you just confirm for me that um, we still do not have quite enough members uh, to approve the summaries of our meetings, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, okay. I hope maybe by the end of the meeting we could, we could go back to it. Yes, possibly. I think what we'll need to do is just defer the approval of items one and two, which are the draft summaries of our most recent meetings, um, until we either have enough of our members present or failing that just to the to the next meeting. Um, but this is our agenda today. We will be, first of all, uh, introducing and, and welcoming our new and returning GSSB members. We have a conversation about the work program priorities for 2021. And then, as I said, we'll have a longer conversation about the Universal Standards Project. Today's, today's subject is the topic boundary. Um, a, I'm not aware of any uh, AOB items that anyone has raised at this point, uh, but if any of them come up, we'll have a few minutes at the very end to talk about them. And then we have a, a half hour private session at which we'll be talking about uh, standards communications and we'll be joined by some members of the GRI Secretariat's um, uh, communications team. Are there any questions at all about the agenda today? Okay, can we go ahead, please? The next slide, I think we need to skip this one. We'll come back to it. We have the very great pleasure at this point of introducing and welcoming two new members to the GSSB, Julia Genuardi and Kim Schumacher. And uh, although he's not on the line just at this minute, we are also welcoming back Vincent Kong, uh, reappointed for his second term on the GSSB. May I ask Julia and Kim to just say a, a few words of introduction, maybe um, who you are, what um, constituency you represent, where you're from, um, and uh, anything that you think the GSSB and our listeners might be interested to know, just very briefly. Uh, no need for anything um, very, very extensive at this point, but um, I think that would be welcome. Julia, would you would you mind uh, just going first, please? 
Yes, yes, thank you. I'm Julia Genuardi. I work for Enel. I am responsible for sustainability planning and performance management. And in this moment, I'm also a member of the FRAC Task Force in terms of non-financial information. And then so I represent uh, uh, business and company. Wonderful. And Kim? Hello, uh, I'm uh, representing um, uh, civil organizations, civil um, uh, platforms, and uh, I'm based in Japan, so I'm representing also uh, Asia, and uh, I'm a lecturer in sustainable finance and ESG at the Tokyo Institute of Technology. Um, I have a background in environmental science, and uh, I'm currently sitting um, uh, also on uh, several other non-financial disclosure and uh, ESG-related, like uh, green bonds, uh, technical uh, working groups. So uh, thank you uh, uh, very much for having me and uh, looking forward to working with the GRI GSSB. Thank you both uh, Kim and Julia. Um, uh, Bastian and Gillian and I had the opportunity to have a meeting with, with uh, uh, Julia and Kim uh, recently to help bring them up to speed about the GSSB and our, our priorities and, and our ways of working. It is obviously um, a challenge to come in uh, to something like the GSSB in the midst of ongoing uh, projects and work programs. Um, but uh, I think I speak for all of us when I say that we have um, a lot of confidence that our, our new members will uh, will eventually get there. But um, uh, if anything is unclear, or if you need anything explained, please just uh, raise your hand, let us know, and, and we'll make sure that we don't uh, go too quickly through anything if we, if we um, can, can be helpful in that regard. Okay, right, so next slide, please. I think I'm now um, turning it over to Bastian Book to uh, talk to us about the work program, the GSSB work program for 2021. Bastian. Great, thank, thank you, Judy, and, and, and welcome, everyone. Um, I will touch upon briefly uh, the priorities that we've set as part of the work program 2020 to 2022 for the year 2021. And uh, if we can uh, move the slides to the next. Um, we, we have a um, very ambitious agenda for 2021. Um, we have, as Judy just mentioned, uh, a, a range of projects that are ongoing uh, and that uh, uh, in part we aim to complete uh, um, this year, uh, but also the decision points scheduled for, for this year uh, um, in terms of uh, taking up new projects, which we have outlined in uh, the work program um, um, uh, last year. So uh, for the ongoing projects, uh, we assume uh, right now, and I think uh, in um, light of the pandemic, we always have to put in a disclaimer, but we assume right now that we are able to complete the ongoing work on the universal standards, including the review of the uh, GI human rights related standards and the first phase of this review um, um, by the third quarter of 2021. Um, likewise, for the uh, first sector standard, the completion of the first pilot under the sector program, uh, the work on the oil and gas sector standard, we aim to bring this to completion uh, uh, by the end of the um, third quarter. Um, when I'm saying end of third quarter, um, these documents will come to the GSSB uh, uh, much earlier than that uh, during the second quarter, but the team will be deeply involved in also preparing the public launch of these documents. And uh, um, what we're depicting here is really the activity of the team over the course of the year. Um, we will continue for the full year to work on uh, the sector standard on coal, as well as agriculture and fishing, um, with uh, public comment moments coming up during uh, the year. And we will provide an update on uh, the timelines for that um, uh, during the next meeting. Um, if we can move to the next slide, please. Um, we have uh, four other projects that we have signaled in the work program, uh, substantive projects, uh, um, and uh, we are looking currently 
add the resourcing to complete the ongoing projects or advance the ongoing projects that I ju have just outlined. Uh, and based on resource availability, we are then gradually proposing new projects to the GSSB uh, from the portfolio of projects that we had outlined in the work program. Um, we anticipate right now that the first project that we will discuss with you in detail uh, in terms of scoping uh, will be the biodiversity project, uh, um, so the review of the GI 304. Uh, we will uh, also look at uh, a second phase of the review of the GI human rights related standards and there are ongoing discussions about the scope of that, which we will bring back to you. Uh, and lastly, also uh, a next uh, project under the sector program, uh, the sector standard on mining. Um, we anticipate that we will be able to table this for discussion and uh, um, also hopefully approval of project proposals uh, um, uh, uh, during the second quarter of this year. Um, there was a fourth project that we have highlighted in the work program, that's the review of the climate change related standards. Uh, for this one, uh, uh, we anticipate that we will need a bit more time to assess what the resource availability is uh, um, within the team um, to get this project started. Uh, and therefore, we currently project to be able to bring this uh, to, for discussion to the GSB uh, um, uh, during the third quarter of this year. All in all, um, uh, we believe that we will be able to commence the projects that you see on this slide uh, during this year. But we have to be mindful of capacity and uh, um, uh, there are certain, I think, pressures, uh, of course, due to the pandemic, but also overall due to the resource situation uh, um, that we have to be mindful of. And uh, um, we are committed to, to uh, move all these projects to a project proposal and approval stage, but some of them might uh, uh, start really towards the end of the year then. Um, I think I'll leave it as that, uh, 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 at that uh, as an update, uh, but I'm happy to respond to any questions that uh, the GSB members might have uh, uh, about uh, the, the individual projects or, or the set of projects in totality. Thank you. Thank you, Bastian. Um, just a little reminder, and for anyone who may not be aware, the, the, the only real constraint on the um, uh, the projects that the um, that the GSSB would like to accomplish is the number of hands available within the standards division team to support these projects. Um, we have uh, done these project projections on the basis of the uh, commitment that the GRI board has made to maintain the standards funding at its existing level. If we should happen to be lucky enough to be able to um, <clears throat> obtain a bit more funding over the course of the year, we may be able to uh, start some of these projects a little bit earlier, but it's entirely dependent on uh, things that are um, not, in, not in our control at the moment. So um, hopefully this, this is a good representation of what to expect over the course of this year. Are there any questions or uh, comments that any members would like to make? Okay, hearing none. Um, thank you, Bastian. I think we can probably move it ahead then to the next discussion, which, as, uh, as I said a few minutes ago, has to do uh, on this occasion with the topic boundary. And Laura Espinach is going to talk us through that. Laura, welcome. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Judy. Um, can we move on to the next slide? <clears throat> Good. So as Judy mentioned, the aim of this discussion now is to have a look at the concept of topic boundary uh, and the feedback that we have received uh, through the public comment period. We will start by providing a little bit of background on the concept of topic boundary and the changes that we have made in the exposure draft of the universal standards. Then we will provide a summary of the feedback that we have received from both the GSSB and the public comment. Then we will present our recommendations for addressing that feedback, and then we will open it up for GSSB discussion. Next slide, please. 
So by way of background, uh, the existing GRI standards include the concept of topic boundary, which is defined as the description of where impacts occur for a material topic and the organization's involvement with those impacts. Organizations using the existing standards need to define the topic boundary for each material topic, and the boundary can be different depending on the topic. And then they have to report the topic boundary for each material topic as part of their management approach disclosure. The intent of this concept was for organizations to identify the entities within or outside the organization that are responsible for the impacts. This concept was developed in line with key instruments of the UN and the OECD, primarily the OECD guidelines and the UN guiding principles, which have defined the scope of responsibility uh, for organizations' impacts. And what these instruments uh, state is that organizations are not only accountable for the impacts that they cause through their activities, they are also accountable for the impacts that they contribute to and the impacts that, are direct, that they are directly linked to through their business relationships. Next slide, please. Um, during the review of the universal standards, uh, we conducted uh, some research and consultation to understand how this concept was being applied in practice. Our initial findings showed that this concept is challenging to understand and is interpreted and reported in a variety of ways. And in some cases, we found that the concept uh, was not being applied at all. Uh, for example, some organizations thought of this concept as the geographical boundary of the impact, and others thought of it as the groups uh, that are affected by the impact. The language used uh, to describe the concept was also found to be too formal, uh, too academic, and difficult to understand. And in particular, the word boundary misled people into thinking of this concept as the geographical boundary of the topic. So based on these findings, the standards division proposed to simplify the concept and to require organizations to report a high level description of whether they are involved with the impacts through their own activities or as a result of, the, of their business relationships. And we also propose to remove the term topic boundary itself. Next slide, please. So prior to the public comment period, uh, we received uh, feedback from one GSSB member, which we agreed to monitor uh, during the public comment period and to consider alongside the public comment feedback. Uh, the feedback shared was that although it is acknowledged that the concept of boundary is misused, some companies were using this as a way of specifying whether specific sites or facilities were not included when reporting on specific data sets. For example, they would use it to indicate that nine factories out of 11 had water data or water was material only at those sites. And given the changes to the concept of topic boundary, it was not clear where this information should be reported going forward. Next slide, please. Then in terms of the public comment feedback, only a few respondents commented on the revisions to the concept of topic boundary. Two respondents supported the removal of the term and the revisions to the concept as it has caused much confusion over the years. Whereas four respondents suggested retaining the concept because it is essential for organizations value chains and it can help the organization understand the scope of its impacts. They also stated that a material topic, such as water stress, can be very significant, but within a very specific organizational boundary, and this may be needed for stakeholder understanding. Then uh, four other respondents did not comment on the concept of topic boundary as such, but they suggested that, that it's important for organizations to distinguish between topics that are relevant throughout a company and topics that are context specific. For example, whether a material topic is considered a group-wide issue or is only a concern in select countries of operation or in connection with select products or business segments. And ahead of the meeting, we have shared the verbatim 
comments um, that we have summarized here so that you have them um, as reference for this discussion. Uh, next slide, please. So as background uh, for this discussion, we thought we would start by doing a recap of the different boundary considerations that organizations have to go through in the exposure draft. So the starting point for this is disclosure uh, rep two in the exposure draft of GRI 102, which requires uh, listing the entities that are included in the organization's sustainability reporting. An organization is free to choose the entities it will report on. Um, it can choose which parts of the organization or which subsidiaries to include, although the draft recommends that this is aligned with the financial reporting boundary. The entities that are listed under Rep2 then form the basis for reporting the rest of the disclosures in GRI 102. For example, when reporting the number of employees, which is one of the disclosures in 102, the organization needs to account for all employees of all entities that are listed under Rep2, and none of the data can be omitted. Uh, although, as you know, the reasons for omission for the disclosures in 102 is currently under discussion. Um, next slide, please. And then for the disclosures in 103 and the topic standards, the entities listed under Rep2 also form the basis for identifying the material topics. Although here the organization needs to consider not only the impacts that these entities cause, but also the impacts these entities contribute to and the impacts that they are directly linked to by their business relationships. Once the organization has identified its material topics, it is required to list them. And then for each material topic, it has to describe the impacts that it has identified, the involvement with the impacts, uh, whether through its own activities or its business relationships, how they manage the material topic, and then they have to report the appropriate disclosures uh, from corresponding topic standards where these exist. So this is the approach um, currently outlined in the exposure draft. And based on the feedback from both uh, the GSSP and the public comment, we have identified two key gaps. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yeah. So the first gap is that uh, disclosure MT2, which provides information about the material topic, does not require listing the specific entities, areas, or sites for which the impacts are material. It only requires a high level description of whether the impacts concern the organization's own activities or its business relationships. The second gap is that it's not clear how to then report the topic uh, standards disclosures in cases where the impacts are material only for some entities, areas, or sites. And, this, and there is currently no guidance, uh, neither in the exposure draft, nor in the existing standards uh, on how to do that. So next, we would like to share um, our recommendations for addressing uh, these two gaps. Uh, next slide, please. So for the first gap, um, based on the feedback from the public comment, we would like to recommend expanding the requirements in disclosure MT2 so that organizations report whether a topic um, is material uh, across the organization or is a focalized issue. For example, whether it's an issue only in certain countries, sites or business relationships. The exact wording and placement we would need to work on, but the idea would be to elicit a bit more specificity when describing if the impacts concern own activities or business relationships. For the second gap, uh, which is then how this translates into reporting the data in the topic standards, we made an assessment of the different topic standards that we currently have. And what we found is that there are a number of standards, such as the standards on tax, and emissions that require reporting, uh, that require complete reporting once the topic has been identified as material, even if the impacts are primarily concentrated in certain areas. 
So in our tax uh, standard, for example, an organization has to report data for all tax jurisdictions and the GHG protocol, which is the methodology that we follow in our emission standard, makes clear that data needs to be provided for all activities and there's no materiality threshold that can be applied. This means that it's not really possible to introduce a general principle or guidance in the universal standards that would allow organizations to report information only for those entities or sites for which the impacts are material, because that would be inconsistent with the approach that we have taken in some of the topic standards. And because of this, what we would recommend is that each topic standard clarifies what's the reporting expectation, whether uh, complete reporting is expected or whether the organization can focus reporting only on those relevant entities or sites. So this is something that we would look to clarify in each topic standard as we revise or create uh, new topic standards. Um, however, to address the initial comment of the GSSB, um, while we don't want to encourage organizations to omit data as a general rule, we feel it's important for organizations to be transparent in cases where they have omitted the required data. So our proposal would be that we add additional guidance to the reasons for omission in GRI 101 for organizations to clearly specify uh, the entities or sites for which required information has been omitted. And then we would also recommend to reference this guidance um, under the completeness principle, uh, also within GRI 101. Um, so with this, I will turn it over to you for any questions or comments uh, on the recommendations that we have made. Thank you. Thank you very much, Laura. Okay, that's very helpful. Um, any members of the GSSB like to ask a question or to speak at all? I mean, if not, um, I, I, I imagine, uh, Laura, that we can probably assume that um, the proposals make sense um, and that um, uh, and that they have uh, support from the GSSB to to go forward here. Um, uh, can I? Yes. So, sorry, can I ask a question? Uh, of course, yes, Joseph. Yes, go ahead, please. Okay, so uh, now this topic boundary, you know, I believe it will have some impact on the uh, customer side and the supplier side of any organization. So I just wanted to understand, is there any GRI standard that is specific on the supplier uh, sustainability or the sustainability at the customer side? Is there anything specific on, a, on, on those things like uh, ISO 26,000, ISO 2400 or responsible care? Yes, we do have a few standards that deal with uh, uh, the supply chain um, or with uh, customers uh, specifically. And what we see often, at least for the supply chain related standards, it, is that there's normally a materiality threshold that has been applied in, in that specific standard uh, when it comes to the boundary considerations. So some standards require reporting only on the significant um, suppliers um, or suppliers that, that have a significant risk for a certain um, uh, impact. Um, and that's uh, also why we propose that uh, these um, considerations around boundary are probably best left uh, to each uh, topic standard as uh, the context and um, uh, the relevance of the information can vary uh, depending on the on the topic uh, that you're looking at. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you for that uh, clarification, Laura. Thanks, Laura. Robin Leeson, please go ahead. Um, yes, thanks. Thanks, Laura, for the, um, the overview. I just, this may be um, a question that, that is part of the next stage, but I was just wondering if the language we're going to use here um, in terms of the responding to the recommendation um, is going to be um, must or, or, or should. 
um, in, in that sense. So that may be something that we consider um, in when the guidance um, and changes are, are being drafted. But I was just wondering if, if there was any early um, steer on that with the recommendations as to what aspects of this would fall under sort of a mandatory, the mandatory requirement um, and what might be um, more sort of guidance encouragement related. The famous shall, should or can <laughs> question. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, good point. Thank you, Robin. Um, I, I think the idea would be to have this as a requirement um, and the exact wording and placement we will need to look at when we update the draft uh, for GRI 103 next. But the idea would be to expand the existing requirement and to make it, to make it a little bit more specific and then support that with additional guidance and examples um, uh, for users to understand how to apply this requirement in practice. Okay, thank you, Laura. Kim Schumacher. Yeah, I just had a question uh, because um, uh, I looked a bit at the comments and um, also like uh, what, what Laura just uh, kindly presented. And I just had a question, were there any specific uh, uh, comments or feedback around visual representation of, uh, of uh, materiality, because that is something at least that um, I see sort of like, yeah, transpiring, like in terms of providing guidance, is there anything that, um, that is planned or so like, yeah, because uh, a lot of standard users uh, often like, yeah, struggling with that. And uh, because materiality is a complex topic, so is there any plans to uh, like sort of like a visual aid in terms of like yeah, interpreting or evaluating materiality in an organizational context? Yes, thank you. Um, yes, we did get some feedback uh, through the public comment uh, on the use of um, uh, the materiality matrix. Um, the feedback was uh, slightly divided on the on the value of that mat matrix, and uh, we can happily share the feedback um, following the meeting. Um, we're uh, currently considering that feedback, and uh, we hope to get back to the GSSB next month when we present our proposal for the revised GRI 103, uh, which now includes the guidance um, and the different requirements on materiality. So yeah, we're currently working on, on how to address that feedback and we will report uh, to the GSSB on this next month. Thanks, Laura. Peter Colley. Thank you. It's just a quick question with respect to the first dot point of the standards division recommendation. Um, that each topic standard clarifies reporting expectations. In practical terms, how, how is that going to be achieved? We currently have a very, well, a rigorous system procedurally based around reviewing topic standards. Is there some proposal here for global amendments to topic standards and how, how is that going to be managed? Thank you. Th thank you, Peter. Um, the proposal would be that we uh, update this as and when topic standards are revised or new topic standards are created. So we wouldn't look to clarify this across the board um, in time for the launch of the universal standards because this type of considerations require the engagement of the expert groups. Um, so our proposal, in some cases, the standards already clarify that, as I said, for, for some of the supply chain related standards, there's already a materiality threshold that has been applied. The tax standard already makes clear um, that all tax jurisdiction, jurisdictions need to be reported in emissions. We make reference to the GHG protocol. So in many of the topic standards, we already clarify this question, uh, but the proposal would yeah, here would be that going forward, this is uh, a question that we need to answer as a must and provide guidance uh, for companies as to what the reporting expectation is and what are the omissions, if any, uh, that can be made when reporting on, on that standard. Okay, thanks. Thank you, everyone. Any other hands want to be raised? Okay, Laura, 
Um, I think we can move ahead. Great, great, thank you. That, that was it from me. Good. We're, we're vastly ahead of schedule in that case, um, which, is, which is fantastic to hear. Um, I, I'll just sort of uh, check in with everybody and make sure that that's uh, still the case, that, um, uh, that there isn't any deeper conversation that the group would like to have about the topic boundary subject at the moment. Um, uh, I will, before I open it to any other business and closing of the public sessions, I'd just like to ask the secretariat uh, colleagues to see if the um, guests who will be joining us for the private session might happen to be ready <laughs> uh, a bit early, um, significantly early, as a matter of fact. Um, and um, we will simply have to take a view as to, uh, what to what to do about that if they're not available. Um, but can I invite any other business uh, matters that any members would like to raise? Okay, hearing none. Um, thank you everyone for your, your time today and your, your fantastic efficiency in dealing with the issues. Um, I think we are um, in a position to close the public meeting now uh, and reconvene the private session in a few minutes. Thank you.